Officials of a major gas company have opened Tokyo's first commercial hydrogen filling station. This follows a Japanese automaker's launch of the world's first commercial fuel cell vehicle, or FCV. Governments and companies across the country are going ahead with plans to create a hydrogen society. NHK World's Jun Yotsumoto has more. A ceremony on Thursday celebrated the completion of the first commercial hydrogen filling station in Tokyo. The facility will be used to fill up fuel cell vehicles. It is able to fuel 50 vehicles a day. A fill up takes about three minutes and the car can travel 650 kilometers. A Tokyo gas official says the operating cost will be about the same as gasoline-powered car. The government contributed about $1.6 million in subsidies to build the facility. With this as a start, we want to accelerate our joint industry government academia effort to realize a hydrogen energy society. Japan's automakers are world leaders in the development of FCVs. Toyota started selling the world's first commercial FCV on Monday. And other major manufacturers are unveiling plans to sell FCVs during the next few years. An FCV is powered by electricity generated through a chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. It emits only water, no carbon dioxide. That is why the FCV is called the ultimate eco car. The Toyota FCV has a top speed of 175 kilometers per hour. Engineers say it took more than 20 years to develop the next generation car. They must ensure that it runs reliably under all weather conditions. The biggest problem was that the water it emitted could turn into ice in very cold weather. They also developed lightweight carbon fiber fuel tanks strong enough not to leak. After decades of starts and stops, FCVs are ready to hit the road. But there's one more wrench in the plans, a lack of hydrogen filling stations. The government has offered financial assistance to build hydrogen stations. So far, 45 applications have been granted. About 20 new stations are scheduled to open by March of 2016. But some are criticizing this as not being enough. One of the biggest challenges is the cost. It may take time, but all related operators must continue to work steadily to spread the stations nationwide. Many believe the realization of a hydrogen society holds enormous potential for Japan because it will reduce its dependency on imported energy. The spread of FCV fueling stations may be the first step toward Japan emerging as a new resource power. ...from across Japan are offering a glimpse into a more environmentally friendly future. They're showing off everything from green home appliances to eco office equipment at a Tokyo trade show. Officials from 750 companies and organizations are showcasing new products at the three-day event. People from Panasonic unveiled a water purifier that removes residual agricultural chemicals and other toxic substances. They say it decontaminates water through a chemical reaction set off by sunlight. And they're developing the system for industrializing countries that have problems with water pollution. Another Japanese exhibitor is working on technology to tackle greenhouse gas emissions. They grow moss that can be used to cover rooftops and outer walls. They say it insulates buildings and reduces the need for air conditioning. More and more Japanese are looking to make a switch to renewable energy. They lost their enthusiasm for the nuclear industry after the Fukushima Daiichi accident in 2011. Residents of one town are tapping a source of power beneath their feet. NHK World's Masami Ukon explains. Handmade wooden dolls are a feature of the town and hot springs surrounded by majestic nature. Chiu Onsen was once a popular tourist destination, drawing 300,000 visitors a year. But many inns were forced to shut down after the 2011 earthquake 
and the Fukushima nuclear disaster about 70 kilometers away. Katsuichi Kato is a former president of Tsuchiyu's Tourist Association. Since the shock of the disaster, he's been trying to find ways to revitalize his town. The town has agreed to his idea to use the hot springs to build a geothermal power plant. Construction is underway where the hot spring wells are located on the mountain. When the plant is completed next July, energy from the steam and hot water will spin the turbines to generate electricity, enough for about 500 homes. The goal is to supply all of the town's electricity needs locally with renewable energy and advertise as an eco-friendly spa town. Next March, a local hydroelectric power plant will also start up. I could see that there was no future if all we did was go back to the way things were before the disaster. If the town can attract tourists and rebuild by promoting renewable energy, we still have a chance here. And this isn't the only innovation in the town. The outside temperature is really cold at 5 Celsius. But inside this greenhouse, it's much more comfortable. The space is being heated by surplus hot water. Hot water from the geothermal plant will run through the pipe surrounding the greenhouse. The town is also growing the West African plant, known as the miracle fruit. It alters your perception, making sour foods like lemon taste sweet. It will be great if we can create a new specialty product to add to Tsuchiyu's attraction. The Fukushima nuclear accident still casts its shadow on the town. The people now have some hope. All these efforts could boost our local economy while also bringing in tourists. Tsuchiyu's project is drawing attention from across the country. This month, a group is visiting from Tsunagi Hot Springs in Iwate Prefecture. They were hearing concerns that it might change the quality and temperature of the hot springs. Kato talked about how they got people's support. Last year's heavy rains devastated our town. We're trying to find a way to rebuild. I want to take back what I've learned here and try to build a consensus. Japanese government officials are ultimately aiming to build more large-scale geothermal plants. In the meantime, they will have to rely on the success of smaller plants like the one in Tsuchi. Many people in Japan have been promoting a shift to green energy since the nuclear accident three and a half years ago. But government officials say one scheme has caused more problems than they anticipated. They say a law forcing utilities to buy electricity from renewable sources has caused an energy glut. The officials say they'll overhaul the subsidy scheme. They announced a set of reforms at a meeting of an advisory panel of the industry ministry. The officials say the changes will make it easier for utilities to buy the energy in a more stable way. Until now, people at power companies have been obliged to accept all renewable energy at set prices. But they say there's been too much coming in and they're worried it will strain their power grids. <laughs> In September, executives at Kyushu Electric Power Company suspended purchases of solar power. People at other utilities followed suit. Government officials say their reforms acknowledge that solar and wind power are unpredictable, so utilities will be allowed to stop all purchases of electricity from these sources if there's a risk of oversupply. 
and they say the rule will only apply to new contracts. Utilities will still have to buy electricity from more stable energy sources like geothermal and small-scale hydraulic power generation. Government officials plan to implement the changes mid-January. Foreign visitors to Japan has topped 12 million this year. That's the highest since the government started counting 50 years ago. Officials at the Japan National Tourism Organization say nearly 1.2 million people visited last month alone. That's up about 40 percent from a year earlier. The weaker yen is a big attraction. That monthly figure pushed up the total from January through November to about 12.2 million. People from Taiwan visited Japan the most with 2.6 million, followed by travelers from South Korea and China. Easier visa requirements for people from Southeast Asia have been a factor for the rise. And more items on store shelves have been tax-free for foreign visitors since October. Tourism officials expect the final total of visitors for the year to exceed 13 million. People who run Japanese beverage maker Suntory are aiming to make the best whiskey in the world. They've seen their product win the top prize at a highly regarded global competition in Britain. But they're struggling to gain recognition with connoisseurs worldwide. We focus on their efforts in the first of our three-part series about exploring Japanese tastes. We'll look at Suntory's strategies to be the best. Japan's first whiskey was produced 90 years ago here at the Yamazaki distillery in the western prefecture of Osaka. The facility's distillation room has varying kinds of pot stills. Top prize-winning whiskies are produced here. Whiskies are left in wood barrels for years for aging. And the maker blends various whiskies in-house to produce its distinguished flavors. Suntry's unique blending process, which cannot be found in Scotland, the traditional home of whiskey, has dramatically improved the quality of the distiller's whiskies. Shinji Fukuyo is the chief blender. In Scotland, a single blender traditionally decides the taste and aroma of a whiskey. But Fukuyo crafts Suntory's blends with four other employees. The goal is to produce a perfectly balanced product. We can obtain greater perfection in developing and maintaining our flavors when we incorporate the expertise of the team in the building process. Scotch whiskey is a major British industry. Japanese whiskey is already on par with Scotch, but it's still little known in the UK. Do you actually ever heard of Japanese whiskey before? No, didn't know that they made it. <laughs> Who makes it? It's a big in Japan. It's... Japanese whiskeys lag far behind in terms of global market share. Raising their profile is key to boosting sales. Keita Minari is a marketing specialist at Suntory's London office. Together with Zarin Perik, a senior member of the UK's Bartenders Guild, he organizes more than 400 tasting events a year to promote Japanese whiskies. About 70 whiskey lovers attend this tasting. Minari and Perik want the connoisseurs to try Japanese whiskey and then spread its excellence by word of mouth. Our aim is to gain more Japanese whiskey fans. Minari explains that the blessings of nature allow the maker to create the finest quality whiskies. He stresses the importance of water, a key ingredient. The water is very good, and uh, this place was chosen by the creator of the Japanese tea ceremony, the Master Sendo Rikyu. It's, it's, it's good. It's, it is very good. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, normally, so concentrate on the the, 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 the Scottish whiskies. But the, the Japanese whisky is fantastic, really doing a good job. Most of the whiskies Minari presented were sold. He wraps them Japanese style for taking home.
Here, people tend to ask if Japanese whiskey is delicious. We urge them to just try it. We believe if we win recognition here, our whiskies can spread globally. Winning over British consumers is the test of whether Japanese whiskey can become number one in the world, both in quality and name.